Hello and welcome to this quick video about how to set up something like iNav telemetry with something like one of the modern radios. This is my RadioMaster GX12 that I've looked at a few times. The one I'm actually using in this build that this is part of a series of, uh, link down below. And I thought it was a good idea. I'd had a couple of questions about what the tips and tricks are to set it up. I've made loads of videos in the past about how to do this, but I thought as I had a new modern build with new modern iNav and also with a new modern radio, I'd actually show you how easy it is to get all of this stuff working. It's incredibly handy to have something like the iNav Lua script running on your radio and getting the telemetry sent back from your quad because the radio will do announcements, let you know things like battery levels that are left, let you know things like the flight modes when your GPS has a lock. All of that goodness is kind of automatically spoken out to you. So whereas with a big color screen, and I'll talk about this more in a minute, on something like the RadioMaster TX16S where you have like a big image, even having it running on something like this is very, very handy because when you plug the model in, it'll take minute or two to get a GPS lock first flight of the day. While you're doing that, you can be chatting to your flying buddies and your radio will announce to you when it's ready to rock and roll. So let's get into the details and I'll go through all the different settings. So here on the bench, I've got my GX12 all set up and configured. Again, this is the quad that I built as part of my Armatan seven inch quad build that I did over Christmas 2024. Uh, let me just plug it in and I'll show you everything that's gonna appear here on the radio. And again, I really like these Lua scripts on the radio because they do allow me Telemetry connected. So there's all the information on the screen. I've got it as a pilot's view at the moment. So you can see that the artificial horizon is kind of going to move on the screen and things. It's a bit jerky because I haven't turned up the speed of the telemetry. But what's going to happen, it's going to give me all the information here about the voltage that you can see, the number of satellites, all that kind of goodness is here on the screen. And if I come out of that and go into the model and zoom all the way across, what we'll see when we look at the telemetry stuff is that there is a huge amount of sensors that's actually being received. You can see them all kind of in here. We've got all kinds of stuff, including the transmitter of power, the normal stuff at the top that you get from the receiver. But then underneath, we have all of these extra pieces, including things like the pitch and roll, the radius. So as I move the model, uh, those are changing. We have the current that's being pulled, all this kind of stuff. So this is being exposed via the Lua script. So if I just press telemetry, that is what is being shown on here. And it's very handy because as you've already heard, it'll do things like announce stuff. So let me go through, I've got this all working. Uh, don't do what I'm doing here, of course. I'm plugging it into the battery. I have made sure that the propellers are all free. Don't do this if you're playing with this stuff. I would recommend when you're ever powering the model on the bench, remove the props. But let's go through right from the flight controller, through to the receiver, through to the radio, how you get something like this working. Because on this little GX12, this is just handy for me because I fly this FPV to have all those announcements here on the radio and be, be able to warn me the battery levels that are remaining automatically. But crucially, it also is really good on some of the things like the RadioMaster TX16S where it has a big color screen that's touchable because you can also do things like load maps and all kinds of funky stuff. So let me plug it into the computer and let's go through the iNav configuration first of all. Now this flight controller that I have on here is good old Express LRS and the Express LRS receiver is actually connected to the flight controller by four different cables, a receive and a transmit cable. Those are used to not only send the data from the radio to the flight controller so that it can sense what all the sticks are, what mode I want, etc. But crucially, it also allows the flight controller to send all that telemetry data back. So here on the computer, if I click on connect, we get it all started. Obviously, this time the mag and barrow um, aren't going to be happy here because unfortunately um, it's not powered just the way this particular TBS flight controller works. However, if I go down into the ports, you can see that I have one of the ports is selected as serial receiver. This is standard stuff for configuring Express LRS, but lots of different systems have some way of sending telemetry back and things like all oh, the FreeSky systems, 
it was smart port and you know that was the way you got it back uh, some of them have single wire telemetry systems but again i for this video i'm just going to keep it simple and show you how to do the express lrs so we've got express lrs set up it's plugged into uart5 in the receiver tab we have it set up as crsf and that is all working as i move the controls on the radio everything that works tickety-boo however the big thing is if we go into configuration and we look and make sure that we have telemetry turned on that is really important and um, it's in a slightly different place i think it's in the receiver tab for things like beta flight but we need the telemetry output turned on so that the flight controller knows to send the telemetry information that it's getting from not only its onboard gyro accelerometer but also from things like the external compass and gps and everything else that we've have installed so that's all we have to do on the flight controller it's pretty easy and straightforward so by connecting the express lrs receiver making sure that telemetry is turned on it's going to be sending telemetry back to the radio now how do we know if that's working welcome to htx well i'm probably going to have to power cycle the model here only because it's now gone into Wi-Fi mode because we haven't connected to it for long enough. So let me just unplug and repower the flight controller because luckily it does actually have um, power for the receiver. So let me just power it up again. Telemetry connected. And now we've connected, we have the telemetry coming back into the radio. And again, simple way to check that is go into the model menu, go into the telemetry, and just discover the sensors. Now, by default, you're only gonna have a handful at the top, like the RSSS, uh, quality, signal to noise ratio, antenna, things like that that come in across really quickly. Those are ones that you always get when you are connected to an Express LRS receiver. Don't be confused if that's what you've got. You know if it's working and you're getting all the additional telemetry, if you scroll down, and you have things like the GPS, GPS speed, heading, altitude, satellites, receiver, battery, current, capacity, all that stuff down here. That is the important stuff. If you're getting that, then you know that the telemetry side is working. Once you've done that, then it's a case of just installing and configuring the Lua script. It's pretty easy and straightforward. You go to this address here, which is the called the OpenTX telemetry widget. It's been around a very long time. There are lots of different versions. If you go over here on the right-hand side, there is um, the latest version, which is released August the 6th, 2024. If you click on latest, it will take you over to here. And here's all the latest stuff. So it had did support for Jumper T15, all these different bits and pieces, improved Tirana support and grayscale options. If I just go back, actually, you can see here, for those of you that have uh, something like a Radio Master or one of the machines that has a big color screen, this is kind of what it looks like. This is more what it looks like on the smaller screens, but you can see it's actually designed to run on lots of different radio configurations and it will figure it out, which is great. You don't have to do a lot of the messing about. So in here in the releases, there's two files that you can download. Be super, super careful with this. Don't use this one here, the 225lua.zip, which lots of people download and get into trouble with. If you download that one and try and use it, you'll get all kind of divide by zero errors and all kinds of things when you use it. The one you want to download is actually this one here, Lua Telemetry 225.zip. If I download that and we open it, then inside, there's only two things, scripts and widgets. And all you need to do is copy those into the root directory of the SD card or storage on your radio. Pro tip here is do make sure that you back up the contents of the storage or SD card. And all you have to do here to, to make this happen is if I just disconnect this flight controller. Telemetry lost. Yes, I imagine that you have. And let me plug this radio into the computer instead. I'm gonna get the option here to joystick storage or serial. I'm gonna pick USB storage. That's going to appear on the computer as this. This is actually the internal 
bits and pieces. I would, before you change anything on a radio like this, I would copy this to somewhere safe. I already did, did that. And then what you do is you just copy scripts and widgets onto the SD card and it will put the iNav stuff in here. So you can see here, if I just move around, actually probably easy way to show you is to go into uh, the widgets. There's now an iNav widget. There's one called main, there's one called Lua C. And now all that stuff is in there, it's gonna work. So all we have to do is unplug the radio from the computer. And that is now here on the radio. So now it's on the radio, we can configure it by going into the model settings and then going into the display, which is 12 of 12, and then setting up the script as iNav. And that will mean that the first page that I'll get when I press, press telemetry is gonna be the iNav script. So I just return out here again. If I just press telemetry, there is the script running and I can press and hold enter, reset the telemetry, reset everything else go through the different screens by doing the roller and actually do all the configuration. And I'll, when I plug the flight controller back into the computer, so it's powered, telemetry connected. we'll get the telemetry coming back. That will all appear. We can see here now what the setting is on, we can see the signal strength and we'll get all the different bits and pieces. I would just, if you're ever having problems with this, my big top tip is go in, delete all the sensors, and reconfigure them. But that's how I have it set up here. And I have iNav telemetry running on any radio that I have with this, but there's also scripts for beta flight. There's ones for Ardu Pilot, the Yapu system. Some of them are a little bit harder to set up, but for iNav, it's super, super simple. And excitingly, because this is a standard screen with a standard size, this works beautifully, even on this brand new GX12 from Radio Master. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.